Today the whole class is showing off their uh, dissertation projects that they've been working on since well September and we've got all our posters in there and some people have got their projects to show as well to all sorts of staff and friends and family. So for my project I've built an ECG with just three leads and it's got heartbeat detection as well so what it does it'll connect to your wrists and ankle it can see your heartbeat waveform and tell you if there's heartbeats there so if you put in any other waveform like a sine wave or a square wave it'll just count that as not a heartbeat and just, so it can tell you the difference between it can say by itself that there's a heartbeat or there's not a heartbeat. I had a meeting with my project supervisor at the start of the year and he had a, a list of ideas to come up with uh, and they're all based around the Raspberry Pi computer and this seemed like the most interesting one to do so I thought I'd give it a go. It's um, been quite interesting, I've learnt a lot along the way, building, learning new skills and building new things. The project is a multi-source energy harvester that uh, generates electricity from ambient radio frequencies and over wind source. So the wind belt generates electricity through a wind source that vibrates the magnet above a coil that uh, induces a current thus creating electrical energy and this is a radio frequency harvester that harvests radio frequencies and then generates electrical outputs without the need for a battery. It took me about three months to do everything to my my standards for a dissertation. Uh, my project is about an optical navigational system for a mobile robot. It utilises the effect that um, polarising light through an emissi prism gives um, to control the mobile robot. So through the prism, which I've got an example of one here. So it's got a roof on the edge, on the hypotenuse side of it. Um, once, the, once the light's polarised through it, it gives um, a split intensity coming out through the output face um, of the different intensities are what is essentially the input signal for the control of the robot. So that changes the speed of the wheels. So it self-corrects onto a certain bearing with an accuracy of about one degree. It can be used just as a navigational system, so if you, instead of using a compass, so if like, you had an orienteer, rather than them looking at a compass, they can have like sound in their, um, in their ears, or even it, it can be used for what it is, um, a robot that goes along a certain bearing that you want it to, it can be set by the operator, so if, um, if you want it to go 40 degrees north, then from, from north, then it will accurately, and you can guarantee that it will be accurately because of the... Um, way that it does it through the prism, yeah. Oh, it's been so much fun, yeah. I've really enjoyed working on it. Uh, yeah, I've learned so much as well from the process and from just working with the different components and like investigating different parts of it and yeah, it's been really good. Now, I've got um, a master's in research set up for next year and um, that's in co um, conjunction with a company as well so I'm hoping to work for them afterwards. This right here is my fingerprint and capture and recognition software. Well, basically it's just a simple sensor that works through the phenomenon frustrated total internal reflection. So what happens here is the light source is going to hit the second medium and then it's going to hit the finger. Once a third medium is a few wavelengths closer to the second medium, a phenomenon called frustrated total internal reflection happens whereby light enters some of the ridges and goes into the camera, thereby illuminating every single ridge in the finger, which is what we need for a perfect fingerprint. So with this perfect fingerprint, what we then do is we do some post-processing techniques to to make it into a format where we can do some matching and feature extraction. So uh, by feature extraction I mean from a, from a regular fingerprint you can either get the ridge endings or you can get the uh, overall shape, the oval or a loop and uh, thereby you can identify a, a person or a user. There are several uses for a, a fingerprint technology. Sadly it's not used for more things. For example, a regular key would be completely inert if these kind of systems were cheap enough. You're going to lose your key but you're not going to lose your fingerprint. I'm hoping to do something computer systems related but more into the banking sector because uh, that's really what interests me currently. But this kind of stuff is really interesting and there's so much like that you can expand on further, especially making it more accurate and with a lower um, false acceptance rate. I had great fun, especially building my product. It was like great fun using SolidWorks to 3D print it, then uh, obviously getting all the research you need, and then finally presenting something final.